Hi friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you two examples. The first one is subtracting a fraction from a whole number. And the second one, um, I'll subtract a mixed fraction from a whole number. So please watch both the examples. At the end of the video, I'll give you two math problems, which you can solve on your own and verify the answer later. But before we start, Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get the notification of the latest uploads, which will definitely help you to improve your math skills. Also, share the link with your friends and families if you like. So let's get started. Um, let's get started with the first example. The first example I have is I'm going to subtract the fraction from a whole number. So let's do that. I have six minus three fifths. Okay, the first thing we have to remember is we have a fraction here and we have a whole number here. First of all, we're gonna convert both of them into fractions. Okay, so let's convert six into a fraction. How do we convert six into a fraction? So whenever you have a whole number and you want to convert that into a fraction, what you're gonna do is you can always set the denominator equal to one. So I'm gonna set my denominator equal to one here. So I'm gonna write this as six over one. And remember that not, not changing the value of um, uh, of your problem because here 6 over 1, 6 divided by 1 will be uh, 6. So not changing anything, this is just a different way of writing a whole number. So you can convert that into a fraction and then we can go ahead and solve this. So I'm going to write this again. Um, so let me write 6 over 1 minus 3 fifths. Now for solving the fractions for add for addition or subtraction, what you need to know is you should have the like denominators first. Like denominators means you should have the same denominators. If you don't have the same denominators, that means if you have different denominators, you cannot add or subtract a fraction. So whenever you have a fraction with different denominators, we call it unlike denominators. So whenever you have fraction with unlike denominators, what you're going to do is you first of all, you try to convert them into like denominators. So we need uh, we need either um, we we need both of the denominators either to be one or to be five. So what we're going to do is we always take the greater number and then we try to convert the smaller um, denominator into the greater uh, denominator. So here we'll take one because think about this. We cannot multiply anything into five to make it one, right? Because I have to multiply something in this to, to this fraction or something into this fraction to make the denominators equal. I have to choose one of the fractions um, for multiplication and then make the denominators equal. So um, I cannot multiply anything into five to make it one, right? We're talking about whole numbers. We cannot multiply, we're not multiplying any whole number into five to make it one, but we can multiply something into one to make it five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this by five over five. Now the question is, why did I multiply five in the numerator as well? Because I just need the denominator to be five. Why do I multiply five in the numerator? We have to remember that uh, um, we cannot just multiply five in the denominator because if I do that, basically I'm changing the value of the fraction because think about this, if I have five over five, it's basically I have just multiplied this six over one with one because five divided by five is gonna be one. So I didn't change the value of this fraction at all because I just multiplied this by one. So that's why it's important that whatever you multiply in the denominator, you have to multiply the same thing in the numerator. So now it's just simple multiplication um, of fractions. We can go ahead and multiply the numerators and then we're gonna multiply the denominators. So let's see, five times six is gonna give me 30. So I'm gonna write 30 here. And then five times one is gonna give me five. So I can write five here. And then I have the subtraction sign in between and I have three fixed, I'm not gonna change it at all. So here you can see that I have the same denominators now. Now it's really easy to subtract these fractions when you have same denominators. What you're, what you're gonna do is you can subtract the numerators. So 30 minus three is gonna give you 27 here. So I'm gonna write 27 here. And you always remember that you never add or subtract the denominator. So your denominator is still gonna remain same and it's gonna be five here. So the answer we got is 27 over five. Now, you can write this as your final answer, but we call this fraction as improper fraction. 
Why we call it improper? Because your numerator is greater than the denominator and we call it improper fractions. And usually we, we don't write the answers in this form. Well, you can write the you can you can write it this as 27 or 5. No one is gonna give you wrong for this answer, but I'm gonna convert this into a mixed fraction. So let's go ahead and convert this into a mixed fraction. To convert 27 over 5 into a mixed fraction, I'm gonna divide it. So 27 divided by 5. Now I need to think um, how many times will 5 go into 27? Well, 5 times 5 is gonna be 25 so I can subtract 25 from 27 and then I got um, 7 minus 5 is 2 and then 2 minus 2 is 0 it's not necessary to write 0 in front of 2 so the way I'm going to write this is I'm going to write my quotient first so we're converting this um, improper fraction into a mixed fraction so I'm going to write my quotient first I'll write my quotient here I'm going to write my answer 5 and then the remainder becomes the uh, numerator of my fraction. Always remember the remainder becomes the numerator of my fraction. So I'm going to write 2 here. And then the divisor becomes the denominator of my fraction. So I'm going to write 5 here. So my answer is 27 over 5 or 5 and 2 fifths. Both the answers are correct. It depends on your teacher. What um, it, Sometimes the teacher won't, um, do not like to see proper fractions, so they may ask you to convert this into a mixed fraction. Or sometimes the teacher is okay with this answer, so it's, it depends on the teacher. So I'm going to write here what the answers are right. So I'm going to write 27 over 5 or 5 and 2 fifths. Okay, so we're done with the first example. Now let's take a look at the, another example. Okay, the next example, in the next example, we're going to um, we're gonna uh, subtract the mixed fraction from the whole number. So let's take a look at this example. I have 8 minus 2 and 2 thirds. So here, whenever you have a mixed fraction, always remember you cannot deal with mixed fractions unless you convert them into improper, improper fraction or fraction. You can call it fraction. Improper fraction is just a kind of fraction in which the numerator is greater than the denominator. So whenever you convert the mixed fraction into a fraction, you always end up with the improper fraction. So we're going to convert the mixed fraction into a fraction first. Let's do that. So we're going to write 8 here, 8 minus, okay, to convert this mixed fraction into a fraction, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the denominator with the whole number. So we're going to multiply the denominator with the whole number. This is going to give me 3 times 2 or 2 times 3 is going to give me 6. And then whatever answer you get. So here we got 6. We're going to add it to the numerator. So the numerator is 2. So 2 times 3 gives me 6 and then 6 plus 2 gives me 8. So I'm going to write 8 on the top. 8 becomes my numerator. And then we never change the denominator. So the denominator is going to be 3. So I got 8 thirds. Okay, now what we're going to do is, again, we are, we are the same problem now, right? We're the same problem where we have to uh, subtract the fraction from a whole number. So again, we're going to uh, set the, whenever we have a whole number and we have to uh, subtract the fraction. Um, so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to convert both of them into fractions first. So I'm going to set my denominator equal to 1. Okay, so here this becomes 8 over 1. Now remember, 8 over 1 is nothing but 8, so I didn't change the value of um, this number at all. Now remember that what we need to subtract the fraction is we need the same denominators in order to subtract the fractions. Well, I cannot multiply anything into 3 to make it 1, right? I cannot multiply anything into 3 to make it 1, but I can multiply something into 1 to make it 3, right? So I'm going to multiply this with 3. So I'm going to multiply this with 3 over 3. Again, you have to remember that whatever you multiply in the numerator, you have to multiply the same thing in the denominator as well. Whatever you multiply in the denominator, you have to multiply the same thing in the numerator in order to uh, not change the value of the fraction, right? Because 3 over 3 is just 1 and you're multiplying 8 over 1 with 1 and not changing the value of 8, right? So it's still going to be 8. Now, what we can do is we can just go ahead and multiply the numerators and we're going to go ahead and multiply the denominators. So 3 times 8 is going to give me 24. So I'm going to write 24 here. And then in the fraction, uh, in the denominator, 3 times 1 is going to give me 3. So I'm going to write 3 here. 
Okay, and then I have the subtraction sign in between, and then I have 8 thirds. So I'm going to write that. Okay, now since I have the same denominators, I have the like denominators, right? I have the same denominators. I can go ahead and subtract the fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract the numerator is 24 minus 8 is going to give me 16. So I got 16 in the numerator. And remember that we never subtract the denominator. So we're going to write this as 3. So the answer I got is 16 over 3. Now, if you want, you can convert this into a mixed fraction. I'm going to show you how to do that. Who do that. So I'm going to divide 16 by 3. Okay. How many times uh, will 3 divide into 16? So we know that 3 times 5 is going to be 15. Okay, so I got 16 minus 15, which is obviously equal to 1. Now, the way we write the mixed fraction is we always write the quotient first, right? So we always write the quotient first. We always write the main answer, and that becomes my whole number. That becomes my whole part because a mixed fraction is made up of whole number and the fraction. So I'm going to write my whole part first, which is my quotient. So I'll write 5 first. And then we have to write the fractions. Now, to write the fraction, I'm going to use my remainder and the divisor. Now, always remember that remainder becomes the fraction's numerator. So I'm going to write 1 in the numerator. And then the divisor becomes the fraction's denominator. So my answer is 5 and 1 thirds. So what I can do is I, both the answers are absolutely correct. I'm going to write this as 16. The answer is 16, uh, 16 over 3 or five and one thirds. Both the answers are absolutely correct. Now, um, I'm gonna give you uh, two examples, okay? And I'm, I'll, I'll give you the answers as well, as well. So I'm gonna give you two examples. One is subtracting the fraction from a whole number. The other one is subtracting a mixed fraction from a whole number. You can try those um, examples. Uh, pause my video, try those examples. And then you can come back to the video. You can unpause the video to verify the answers. Okay, the example, the first example is, okay, here I'm going to write, the first example is 4 minus 2 sevenths, and the second example is 5 minus 3 and 1 fifths. So just don't get confused. This is not a part of the question. This is example 1 and this is example 2. So 4 minus 2 sevenths and 5 minus 3 and 1 fifths. You can pause this video and try to solve these examples on your own. Um, and later on, you can verify the answers. So I'm going to give you the answers um, in two seconds. Okay, so the answer is, the answer for this one is going to be 26 over 7, 26 over 7, or 3 and 5 sevenths. So this is going to be your answer for this one. You can either leave it as a fraction or if you want you can convert this into a um, mixed fraction and the answer for this one is going to be nine fifths or one and four fifths so these is the these are the answers for these um, examples um, well uh, that's all for this video thank you so much for watching Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.